I hear people laughing at it, you know, other people don't understand it, or they're watching with somebody who just speaks Spanish and they translate, and then they're still enjoying the laugh of it. They're still picking up on the humor about it. And the emotion behind the reads also helps people understand what we're trying to communicate through it. Y estamos aquí en el zoo. Yo soy Humberto, por supuesto, here, here with a very special guest. Sean Ryan Peterson, the Woo! voice of Valentino on Victor <laughs> Valentino, a cartoon, not a documentary. <laughs> I'm doing absolutely amazing this morning. I mean, I'm here. Thank you guys so much for having We're me. We're excited to have you. Excited to have you. So tell us about Victor and Valentino. Ah, yes, Victor and Valentino. Made by the man, the myth, the legend, Diego Milano. Absolutely love that man. He's done an amazing thing by creating this project. I'm so honored to be a part of it. It follows two half-brothers. There's Victor and Valentino. You know, they are named after the show. <laughs> um, <laughs> as they stay with their grandma in the small town of Mani Macabre. Mani? Or Monte Macabre. Monte Macabre. Is that awesome. a real place? I'll make it up. I don't think so, but that'd be pretty cool if it was. I think it is a real place. We're I'm going to look it up on Expedia after this and get back All to right, it. Yeah, we'll go together. You <laughs> yes, I'm in. All right. my suitcase packed. <laughs> and you just, the show just got picked up for season two. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. Network, yes. On Cartoon Network. Wow. So how does that feel to, you know, create this project and see that people are loving it so much and there's going to be more? You know, it's actually, it's kind of hard to describe. Whenever, when I heard that I got season two, I felt the same surreal feeling that I heard when I was told that I got the job to play Valentino. Mm. I'm just so happy that people are enjoying it though because I relate to it very much. Valentino and I are very similar. You know, we're both primarily English speaking lens of like second second generation. You know, I, I, don't, I never really learned how to speak Spanish. I've always wanted to. I sort of just struggled with it, but English is my primary language. But my household, we speak Spanish. I understand my parents and my grandma who lives with us when they speak it to me. It's, it's very much a part of my life. But um, the culture represented in the show is what I'm really happy that people are enjoying. Of not just, you know, Latin kids seeing their own culture represented on mainstream TV, but also other cultures learning about it, learning that, oh, maybe this isn't a stereotype or correcting a stereotype. Yeah. It's, there's just so many great things that this show does. And again, honored to be a part of it. Is, um, it so is it by, because I've only seen the one episode, do you guys play around with the bilingualism? Like, you know, having someone that doesn't understand what you're saying and you don't understand what they're saying? Mm -hmm. Is that something that you play around with? Actually, there's a lot of bilingualism. Okay. My character, not so much, but Victor, he has a ton of Spanish uh, phrases and sayings that he yeah. throws out all the time. Uh, our grandma Chata, she's also saying a lot of lines in Spanish. Some, some lines are just Spanish. There's, there's a lot of playing around with the bilingualism. Um, what do you think about having that in a general market network like Cartoon Network? Like just throwing it out there and, and having people, hey, if you don't understand it, just go along with it. You know, it seems to work. Mm -hmm. It really does. Even if I don't understand, even sometimes I'm in the booth like, can someone translate that for me? <laughs> it's still like, it works. I, I hear people laughing at it, you know, other people don't understand it, or they're watching with somebody who just speaks Spanish and they translate, and then they're still enjoying the laugh of it. They're still picking up on the humor about it. And the emotion behind the reads also helps people understand what we're trying to communicate through it. But it, I think it's pretty crazy that we're able to just throw out this bilingual, yeah. authentic representation of like Latin American culture is that the onto first the general market. Well, is it the first one on the Cartoon Network? Has there ever been oh, a yeah. Latino-themed I mean, uh, cartoon on Cartoon no. Network? Cartoon Network? No, no. This is definitely a wow. first, and wow. it's it's groundbreaking. It's about time. It yeah. is. Well, geez, oh, Louise. That. Yeah. Right yeah. Here. I know you you work with Jenny Lozano, I believe, right? She's on it sometimes here and there. Lorenzo? Lorenzo, there you go. Lorenzo, Jenny. Jenny. Yes, yes, she's hilarious. Yes. Oh my How gosh. Is that? Oh my god, I love her. Uh, let's see. She plays a very funny character. Her name's Lupe. <laughs> she's got this kind of Cuban mafioso oh, voice, nice. and I'm like, it kills me every time she does it. First time I heard her come and do it, because you know, a lot of times we're still we're still like casting the characters. Sometimes we'll record it and we don't have a certain person, but then I'll watch the final product, or they do come in for the first <laughs> time and they do that character. Well, <laughs> 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 like Jason Hightower, he does Don Jalapeno. That voice kills me every time. You're just, like, he's the best Peno. person to do like something with because he's laughing at you. Uh, okay, I'm... so he's he does a lot of voices too. We need to get him on a cartoon, all right? Ooh. Nikki Paris bitch. That's his whole name. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I'm not saying Nikki Paris bitch. It's Nikki Paris bitch. <laughs> what do you? Because you're trying. Like, what do you think? You with a cartoon? I character? admire. I, so I mean. I have to ask, like, did you always do voices growing up? Like, when did this start for oh, you? Oh, yeah. Okay, I have been at this for 10 years, 11 oh, years wow. this, t the, this year. Uh, I actually got into the industry because I wanted to do voiceover. 
I was sitting there, I was around eight years old, watching Saturday cartoons. I was either Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh or something like that. Digimon, I think. Um, and I turned to my mom and I said, hey, I want to be a voice on TV. And that was actually my entry into the industry. Very unlike most people who are like, I want to be on the big screen. Yeah. I was like, I want to be a voice. <laughs> and, and what was your first gig? My first gig was Dive Ollie Dive. It was a dub for an Australian PBS show, a uh, kid show. Uh, and that was a lot of fun. You actually. did an Australian accent. No, oh, okay, okay. it was a little too Australian. I guess they wanted. <laughs> Let's hear it. Um, I hope I could still reach that. Uh, flying flatfish. It was. It was super young. I was like nine. Oh my god. And they're like, this is too Australian. We wanted only so much Australian. This is way too much Australian. You have, let me put down like the koala. The original voice. I did a dub. <laughs> okay. So it was like a. It was like a voice replacement type deal. It started in Australia and then moved to the U.S. But, what, but, but, it was in, but it was in English, but in an Australian accent. Yes. And they wanted not, they didn't, <laughs> see, you basically dubbed an English language into another English language just so not an Australian accent. Oh my That's God. amazing. <laughs> we, we're going to start dubbing the zoo, but like we're going to be just having somebody with a stronger accent than we already have <laughs> dub this thing. What do you think? Maybe we can get oh, yeah, you yeah, get him to do it. Get him to do it. He has 10 years experience. Oh wow. my god. Now, how does it feel to be so young and so accomplished? Is there any, what what else do you want to accomplish? Um what comes next, I suppose, is more work and maybe eventually a personal passion passion, passion project of mine. What, what would is you that? what would it be? Well, I may or may not be writing a pilot of myself. <gasps> oh, 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 hey. <laughs> Give us details if you can. Um Still very, very much in the works, but it came from a dream. It's very um, high fantasy. You were I'm able to remember, so you came out of the dream and you were able to remember enough of it to write a pilot uh, based on the dream? That's never happened. Yeah, I woke up, I just grabbed my phone to start typing on it. I'm like, I gotta remember this, I can't let this slip me. Oh, wow. God. Have you guys had dreams, like I've had a couple yeah. dreams where I'm like, man, this is an amazing idea. I have an amazing idea for a movie. And then I wake up and I remember like one detail and it's just not enough to build on. Okay, well, listen. Sean, Ryan, Peterson. That's, I like that's a long yeah. name. Oh, oh, if you think that's long. Sean, Ryan, Michael Luna, Ignatius Peterson is my Oh, oh. Well, excuse you. Oh. Okay. Thank you for joining us. You're amazing. We can't wait to check out season two. Yeah. yeah. Victor and Valentino.